Okay, I am going to try something here in this live stream that I've never done before, and that's kind of more of a, a construction card, I guess you can call it, um, piecing um, elements of a card or scene together from separate pieces. I'm usually integrating things on a single piece of, you know, two-dimensional surface, and I thought I would try this. <laughs> Maybe not a great idea to do, you know, completely new things. It, it, it doesn't seem like a hard concept, but, um, at, at a, you know, just kind of live like this. But, you know, why not here? Hello, Diana. Hello, Bugs uh, Mediocre Arts and Crafts. <laughs> cool uh, YouTube name there. Hello, Tammy. How are you? All right, now what I was just mentioning there, I'll mention it again a, a few times. Hello, Beverly. Um, I'm going to try a, a, a kind of a con more of a construction card here. You know, not a new concept by any means, but it, it is for me. So um, trying it out, and I wanted to do it with that red barn piece again, okay? But instead of doing things on a single, um, on a single flat plane, um, we would try it uh, kind of comprised of separate pieces and I'll see if I can kind of integrate everything together. Hello, Penny and, and Paula and Jeannie. Karen, how are you? All right, let's see here. All right, so I'm going to be piecing a bunch of stuff together as I was just mentioning. You know, not a new concept by any means, but it, I don't remember doing this before. I'm usually working on a single piece of paper trying to make things look three-dimensional, so I would think this is going to be, uh, I don't know, not more three-dimensional, but, you know, <laughs> actually in terms of building something um, more three-dimensional, I guess, than usual, okay? So here's my concept here. I'm just going to be doing this. I wanted this red barn to really stand out, and I was really fussing over this one. I was thinking, uh, you know, doing a lot of different tones on that barn, and I thought, I'm just going to stamp it out in red, and then I'm going to paste it down, and we'll follow suit with a bunch of other um, elements and just see how fast this can come together, and if I can kind of integrate it a little bit more. Hello in Ontario, Sheila. Um, but we'll see how it goes here. Um, so I don't know, you know, I'm, I'm trying to think of the exact um, process and um, steps to take in this one to make things integrated, so I'm just going to wing it. I have pre-stamped a couple um, tree trunks here. Now, <laughs> Like these tree trunks are going to be the easiest thing in the world to cut out, so I thought this would be a good composition for this type of construction. So I'm going to give it a try, but you know, the thing that kind of is going through my mind is, you know, um, should I color this thing right here before I cut it out? Should I put it together and see how it looks and then kind of add in my little elements or what, you know, so I wasn't quite sure about that, but... I'm just going to go along here and see how it goes. Okay, now one of the things about this barn is I don't want necessarily want that roof to be red, okay? This is just stamped out on some iridescent paper. It was like the only red that I had. I have all kinds of papers, but I don't have like just, I don't know, some basic colors of certain, um, uh, you know, card stocks. So I'm just going with what I had here, but I thought maybe the um, iridescent might look kind of cool. And, all right, let's see. I'm just going to make this barn roof just straight f uh, straight black, okay? So I'm not going to take the time to totally mask this off and tape it all down. I'm just going to do it in steps like this, okay? All right, so um, I guess I can just color it in with a pen, too. I don't have to do it with a, kind of a sponging method, but, yeah, let's see. Uh, I tell you what, instead of the Versifying Claire that I stamped the image at, I'm going to do it in the Brilliance, so that will be faster drying. Okay, maybe, I don't know, maybe I'll do both, or, you know, just color in as well. So this is, I don't know, 
I, I, I guess I'm going to make this one kind of a little bit more in the spirit that I thought my previous one was going to be, but I ended up doing a lot more toning and things like that on that one. I wanted it to go faster, but um, <laughs> I get caught up into doing, adding these little touches into all my pieces that, you know, I kind of like all the little details in, you know, just artwork in general. So I really spent a lot of time with that kind of uh, integrating things and transitioning things uh, into the snow and all that. But um, let's try and see what this one looks like. And it might be pretty cool in a mirror card format. I don't know. Okay, so let's see here. This red barn looks pretty good. It's just this straight black roof, I think. Kind of makes it so you can kind of do anything with it um, above it. Okay, so the red barn, I mean, it's going to be the smaller version because I'm doing a smaller piece of it. I'm not quite sure what to do in terms of the um, spaces in between. Do I take an X-Acto blade and cut that out in there? I don't know. But that's going to go up against this. Um... You bought some cotton balls. Awesome. <laughs> you didn't have them already, huh? Okay, so this is going to be going up against, um, no, uh, a blue sky in the background like that, okay? And I'm going to put the snow down at the base here. Let's do that right now, as a matter of fact. Let's get that kind of established here. Um, a lot of people don't have 100% um, cotton. You, you got the 100% cotton ones, right? Um, a lot of people, do, you know, we have like synthetic ones. I think I had some synthetic ones and some 100% um, uh, cotton. And I was like, oh my gosh, the 100% just worked so much better. In fact, the synthetic ones for me just didn't work at all. Okay, so I'm going to cut, well, let me see. I need to measure here. That snow is going to be like right up in here maybe I need to check it with the reflection down here so let's go like about up like here okay so I guess it's like the rule of thirds huh we can always trust the rule of thirds everyone know what the rule of thirds is you kind of break things down kind of a horizontal and vertical um, structuring of thirds I don't measure things out but just kind of roughly so I'll go right about here Let's see. And this is going to represent my horizon line. I'm using a French curve right here. Um, you can do it freehand though, but let's see. I don't want it too swoopy, so let's go roughly about right here. I can't even see it. <laughs> oh, the flat round discs. I have those too. And those work okay. Um, now remember, I use the cotton for um, pigment inks, not too much for my um, my thinner dye-based style inks. Although the, the dye-based ones, I mean, it worked okay, but I, I, I feel that the uh, the paper towel works a little bit easier for me with uh, just paper towels. All right, so this is a quarter page piece of cardstock. I might be able to get it smoother, you know, with an exacto blade, but I'm just doing it with the scissors here. It's, you know, it's going to be close enough, I hope. So this is going to go like this, okay? So let's check out the reflection in the water there, okay? I think that'll get a reasonable degree of attention. <laughs> and this will be my barn like that, okay? In back of there, maybe I might have to put it over. I might have to go lower, let's see. I'm checking it out in terms of uh, the visual up above. Let me see here. If I go lower, well, I need. I still need room for my tray trunks. Okay, I, I have to go this high. I think. Um, hmm. Let me see how this is going to look. I'm going to cut this out right now. I need to make sure that this is going to be visible in that water area. Okay. All right, I've never done so much cutting in my life here, <laughs> which means to say that I hardly ever do any trimming at all for anything in my scenes. All right, 
All right, I don't need to cut off the bottom because I'm going to be putting it in the back of this little snowy bank right here, okay? So it's going to be something like that. I might I might need to I might need to mellow out that ridge. Yeah, that see that barn doesn't show up as much. Let's go a little bit lower here. Okay, so I need to adjust here. Okay, so let me just flatten this out a little bit. Okay, so I have that. All right, let's see. Like that, like that. My hands are already getting a little smudgy. Okay, I think that'll do, like that. All right, so. Here's one of the things I'm going to do too, because I want that red barn to stand out a little bit more against this um, blue foil. I'm going to make a mark right here along this area. Okay, so we have that little mark down there in the blue foil. And I think I'm going to put in some background trees in here. So let's see how this looks. Um, I hope decent, but we'll see. Okay. Did you try your cotton balls? <laughs> this cotton, one bag of cotton balls really lasts a long time. I've been using them a lot over this last year and a half or so, and I started off with this bag of cotton balls. You know, I bought them like the, you know, the lockdown at this one grocery store, and they were really, they weren't very good um, cotton balls. And I used those a ton with my one of my brilliant sinks here, and um, and it was like the never ending. It wasn't didn't seem like a large bag, but it was like the never ending bag. It just never ran out, and I, I didn't really feel like going out and buying like another bag of better kind of more tightly wound cotton balls. These other ones were really um, I don't know they're kind of frilly. Um, real linty and uh, I just finally I got around to going to like to Target and buying like a better brand of them so uh, they work a little bit better so yeah these ones right here although I don't know this bag looks like it's emptying out faster than my other ones I don't know if I've been using them more alright so there's those two trees down there it looks really weird like that but um, you know it'll be going in back of my card like that. So hopefully that um, those white trees right there will provide a better contrast against that black rooftop, right? Okay, so let's see how this goes here. Um, let's heat set this. Again, I'm using the Brilliance inks because they will dry very quickly on this type of highly, um, I don't know, very non-porous surface of the, this one happens to be the Recollections foil right here. I think this came out of the primary pack. There's another blue that's in the, um, uh, the Jewel Tone pack. All right, be careful with the, um, with the uh, foil when you're heating them up. I find that the Recollections foils, they're kind of textural. I don't know if we can see this, but this one not quite so much, but with some of them, when you look at it really closely, it's very um, textured and you can almost see like cracks in the surface. And then here's one of those things. When I stamp on this Recollection, someone mentioned, asked me about this um, on their piece, whether they were experimenting, they noticed there was a lot of bleed through with stamping. They were mentioning, I think, the red foil. And it becomes kind of, if you stamp in it on white, it's either that ink is just becoming a lot more transparent so that you see the colors underneath showing through. But I swear that the, the Recollections foils kind of bleed into 
the ink and becomes, you know, some version of that color. So if you're stamping in white, it becomes kind of like a pastel version of the hue that they've dyed it in. I don't know how that would be because that brilliance ink dries pretty fast and you wouldn't think that it's putting the inks on the surface back into solution, but I, I don't know. I, I'm convinced that it does. It's good and bad in that your inks kind of harmonize a little bit more by taking on some of that ink that's in there, but if you want it to be really nice and light, sometimes it's hard to achieve that just going with, you know, a single either application of white with a cotton ball or an impression like that. So these, I think, are going to look a lot, um, well, not a lot, but, you know, somewhat darker. Like right down here, you can see that blue kind of showing through. This one right here is probably a little bit more, it's probably still wet. But just, you know, just kind of watch that. Oh, someone's been watching the channel for years, huh? Well, you're watching me do something here on this video for the first time. <laughs> I've never glued stuff down, you know, like, you know, I'm going to glue that, you know, this barn goes back here, right? And I don't know, I'm going to have to integrate that in more with the surrounding area, like right in here, I need to figure out what to do in there. Um, Gosh, do I want to cut that out with a little X-Acto blade? Um, maybe I will. Okay, well, let's see how this goes. I mean, it might all be kind of when you get, you know, kind of to the finished piece, and it, it might all kind of work in the spirit of in which this is constructed here. Something like that. I mean, let's see, it's kind of looking pretty cool already, I guess, with those additional... Um, trees in the background, and then we have this. I mean, there's no way I can get this red barn, right, over that blue foil. I mean, it has to be in a separate um, paper like that. So uh, let's see, maybe I'll put it like right over here, something like that. I'm going to have to measure things a little bit more. Go in something like that. Maybe I'll put that down there right now. And if, if I need to make adjustments, I'll just do it on you know, the card like that. And then these ones are going to go out here, like over here, and this one will go over here. So this will be flanking that. But we need to really color these though, don't we? I mean, that's not going to integrate from a visual standpoint, like at all. Um, huh. I don't know why you didn't get a notification, Karen. Um, maybe, uh, um, I don't know. Some people are hitting the, oh, you know, one of the things um, about the notifications is you can hit that notification in on, you, you know, YouTube, but you need to make sure that you're allowing notifications for YouTube in your system preferences sometimes. Sometimes those are turned off, so I would check that. I don't know the exact thing for everyone's um, systems, but I do know that... Um, that that would be, um, could be a factor. But uh, yeah, sorry I got on so late for you, uh, Karen. I don't know, I wasn't going to jump on tonight, but I thought, I wanna see if I can do this. It's been kind of twirling around in my head ever since I did this one, you know, a couple days ago. So it was like, I wanna try that out. So just jumped on. Okay, so here's my question with this one. I'm not quite sure of what kind of color scheme I should bring up, you know, to this right here. Um, but something that'll harmonize with that background. I might just do a, a few different colors, and this is one of those instances where, um, I don't have to stay within the lines because I'm going to be cutting out these trees anyway here, so. I'm just going to, okay, now here's one of the things I'm going, I'm, I am kind of paying attention to. This, these were stamped out in Versifying. Um, Claire. So it's pigment ink, so it's going to be a little bit smeared, I think. But I'm going to, let's see, this tree will be on my right side of the scene, and this one will be on the left side. Okay, so let me see. So right side, right shadow, and left side, left shadow. Okay, so I need to, let me pay attention there. 
do that. But yeah, I don't know. I mean, if you get notifications for other um, um, channels, I, I wouldn't know what to tell you. But um, if you're not going to get notifications at all, check your check your system preferences and then go into your notifications um, link and make sure that the uh, just I, I think YouTube, you know, just in general, you're allowing notifications for the site and make sure that, you know, um, YouTube is clicked or whatever. Check the box is checked. All right. So anyways, going on with that, I think some blues, you know, since the scene is blue, right? Let's go on with, uh, have a Danube blue. Okay. Going like that. And then we'll also use black. Let's go pretty, let's go pretty dramatic on this one. Okay. And let me see, I'm going to put, I don't, I, I'm only going to be using um, certain portions of these trunks as well, because they'll be running off the page, both left to right and also top to bottom. The bottom portions will be integrated into the scene, but um, the top portions I'll be running off the page. Let's see right here. Oh, you, your notification came late, huh? Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I... The, the UK site, I, I'm not... I just... I don't know when they're going to get that... Everything updated on there, but yeah. People can always... They need to put it on the site, you know, maybe that... You know, you can email them with whatever you want and, you know, they'll send, they'll just bill you that way. Yeah, right, Karen. Um, load it up with that ink like that. It's one of the things about um, that type of process is that's a lot of people just don't do because people are used to coloring, okay, but not like really saturated and glazing their scenes is um when we do that um everyone's at first they are just not used to using that amount of ink in that type of process okay so they might put a little bit more ink but sometimes it's like five times the amount of ink that um people would normally use to color something as opposed to kind of give a base layer for, you know, really intense, like, glazing and whatnot. Oh, they haven't, well, I'll, I'll try to contact them, okay? Huh. Have you, have you sent them a follow-up email by chance? I'm not sure what's going on with them. I know that, uh, I know that they were doing a lot of, um, flooding damage uh repair work to their to their you know the residents so i'll see if i can get in touch with them for you one good thing about the uk apparently brilliance inks are cheaper there than they are here even when shipping here from there, believe it or not. I don't know, there was this one seller, I forgot who they were. And they ha seem to have everything. Okay, so see, my lighting is coming from that direction there. All right, now, I, I this is on a um, that silk, you know, kind of more matte kind of paper. And I thought I'm going to bring in some additional colors into this mix with um, some in the form of colored pencils. And I think the colored pencils are going to be the thing that I'm going to use at the base down here uh, on my snow when I put my trees into this. Okay, so I think I'm going to put some shadows. And let's see, the barn's going to be over here. Shadows in this way. I think I'm going to do a little splatter painting with some snow up above. Maybe do a North Star here in the corner or something like that. I don't know if you can tell. See that? Do you notice that these have the have the trees become more blue since you know even from when I stamped it when I've been you know working on these trees right here? 
it's kind of setting back in the scene a little bit more. Again, it's not a bad thing, but um, just kind of expect, oh, my exposure's changing around on here in my camera, I noticed. But, okay, going back to this. Hello, Christine. All right, so let's see. Adding a little tinge in here. I don't, I'm not really, you know, pleased with the, the coloring that I'm doing here, but I'm going to be adding in some extra textures and things like that over the top of this, so I'm not really concerned about that. I don't really worry about that type of thing, knowing um, kind of the further, you know, uh, um, applications of media that I'm going to be doing. Um, anytime you order something from them, Karen, just, just send them the codes, you know, just say you want stamp number, you know, 001A, and then if you want them in unmounted, just say the unmounted versions. I, I, I don't think they even have the wood mounted versions on there. Or if you're doing a set, you know, um, I think they have the unmounted versions. I don't know how many of the cling foam versions they have. Okay, so adding that in, see, it's just a little tinge of some of that brown in there. And I think I want to go pretty dark. I, this is a pretty bold, you know, foily type of, you know, background right there. So I think I'm going to go pretty strong in terms of my applications here. Let me go back to the brilliance. I think I used, did I use the Marvy Black on this one? I don't even remember. So let me go with this one. And let's really push um, kind of value and contrast in this piece, just because of the nature of it and uh, how we're kind of, um, I don't know, kind of, you know, designing this, this, this piece right here. It's kind of really weird for me to color something like this and just to go completely outside of the lines, you know, so to speak, outside of the image. All right, I think that'll do for right now. Um, Beth, someone asked me about that um, recently, and they were having cracking, um, breaking, you know, every time they used um, either a manual or electric sharpener, it was um, breaking for them, you know, all their, their pencil I don't know, do we call it lead when it's colored pencils? You know what, I don't even need to cut off this side right here because this side is going to be going off the page, I think. Or is it? I'm not sure. Eh, maybe it isn't. Maybe I'll do this like this. I'll just, I'll just cut, cut them out flush. I was thinking I'm going to be cutting off a side of it anyway, so I might not need to do this. But um, their manual sharpeners and their electric sharpeners were breaking all of their colored pencils, but then I tried it, you know, I was doing um, some volunteer work in the um, middle school art program, so one there's one or two assignments that used colored pencils, so I was sharpening, um, this school has 1500 kids, so I was sharpening it sometimes, and I was in charge of uh, the supplies, so I might be sharpening you know, I don't know, 200 colored pencils. I think they use the white and black or something like that. And I never had anything break, but one of the things that I did notice when I was sharpening my pencils is when you go in there, you have to go in just directly like that. You can't, you've got to make sure that you're not putting any weight in any direction because when it gets starts getting into that finer tip, it'll, it can break, but I, I usually don't go all the way in there with the electric until it has that auto stop. I just go in there and pull out. So I have a video that I did um, on colored pencils. So I don't know, if, you know, if, if it'll help you, but I did it both ways. I did it with the manual and the electric. For me, I love the electrics and um, I don't know, I didn't have a single one break, but I could absolutely tell where that could happen 
um, just with a slight bit of pressure. So when you're going in there, make sure you're not pressing down. Make sure that you're just going in straight and you don't feel any weight leaning to one side or the other. And that's the same with the, um, the manual sharpener. I, if I had my manual sharpener, I'd show you. I think it's back in my, uh, my toolbox. I don't usually have it out. I don't sharpen my pencils very often, but um, yeah, just watch out for that. And like I said, I, I, I sharpened up many of them and none of them did that. But again, it's like I, I realized what was happening, I think, with that. Okay, so this is this tree is going on this side like that. All right. And the other one's going on the other side. It looks all ugly because remember, a bunch of this is going to be uh, chopped off. So, uh, okay, that's still too light though. Let's 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 bring a lot more color into this, okay? Um, let's see. Let's just go in this. I want I want a warmer brown though. Okay, so let's see here. Let's just go with some of this red tinge. Okay, this is terracotta. Let's check this one out. Um, I mean that could be the case with those pencils, but I don't know. Yeah, like I said. Um, I, I, I don't know. It's, it seems, it's kind of hard for them to pre-break in there. I mean, it could be, it's definitely, you know, possibility, but, um, I don't know. Just, yeah, just be mindful of the angles, I guess, even slightly off. It's, it's really a, you know, it could be potentially pretty precarious. All right, so filling that in, and again, I'm going to be putting on like some snow on these with the acrylic paint pens. So again, I'm not too worried about kind of the finish on these at this point in time, because it's going to be covered with a lot of media, or not a lot of media, but extra media anyway. All right, so that is that. Now, I think I'm going to cut this off on the bottom like it's in snow a little bit more or I don't know here's here's the part where I'm not really certain about is how to just kind of finish off these bottom portions like that so that's one of those things I'm kind of uncertain about in approaching things this way and again just because I haven't done it before too so I don't have a history of kind of you know kind of little these little tweaks and solutions here all right so and it's like, okay, which one of these goes on first? Do the trunks go on first, or does does this little sloping hill go on first? I I you know what, Karen, Ally Express, it's so dumb. Uh, hello, Annie, in Florida. Um, they have this thing where you um, you submit this uh form to uh make your claim or complain about that. So you have to enter this information and then they, um, but this information, hey, that looks pretty cool. <laughs> Let's see how it looks in the uh, reflection there. And then, I don't know, this little thing, this thing where you enter it in there, um, it's like doesn't work. So it just spins and spins and, and says, oh, there's a there's a problem. So they have this kind of official thing where you're supposed to complain, but I think it just purposely doesn't work. Okay, so it goes like that. And then let's see what this barn's going in here like that. In the background. That that barn doesn't really integrate very well uh, at all. <laughs> But let's see if we can get it to integrate a little bit more, okay? All right, so let's see. I might have to go, I'm kind of tweaking it right here. I'm tweaking the composition as we speak, okay? So it's hard for me to tell where all this is going. The bottoms of the trunks, though, they look pretty good. I'm sure, kind of surprised at how well they're integrating. Okay, so one, two, three. We have three layers right here, and let's okay let's get let's get 
just get right into this right now. Let's go with this, like that. All right, let's just mark this off like so. Okay, and we'll go on the top. Okay, so let's just tape this down. I need to see if I can bring in some extra little light into this barn here with the use of some pens. And I'm, I didn't bother cutting out all those little spots in there, okay? We'll see this as kind of like a test piece right here. Yeah, I, know, I mean, I want that, you know, to come out looking, you know, pretty decent, but um, I don't know. Largely an experiment here. Okay. Oh, Ally, yeah. Ally Express, I mean, that's, it's not, it's the sellers that are selling on there, on Ally, you know, that's the big problem. I'm sure there's a lot of legitimate products on there, but it's whoever's, whoever's doing that. It's kind of, it's kind of the problem, I don't know, I saw a bunch of other companies' designs on there, and I don't know, they're not interested in kind of policing their own kind of sales but anyway it's the one bad I mean there's a lot of bad things about it but those stamps work horribly too um, those versions of it they're just scanning off some things and then just posting it and it's all in that clear and they give horrible impressions too all right but anyway enough of that I don't like to think about them all right, so that is going there. Okay, so this is about this. I'm going to be cutting off this amount of it. Okay, so let's get these positioned. And then I'm really, the thing that I'm really interested in here is integrating all of this in with a surrounding area, you know, because they're all separate pieces. I mean, I'm never doing that. I'm not. In scenes, I'm just kind of curious to see how well I can bring all these different elements together. So let's see here. Let's go down about like so. All right, stickiness right here. And we have another piece. Now, one of the things that's going to be, one of the things that I'm looking at right here too is that there's a lot of um, textural kind of, oh, I don't know, textural elements in here that aren't very well integrated. So um, we'll see what we can do with that. Um, in terms of like the white opaque acrylic and let's see let's get this eh, I'm trying to think of I want this a little bit more on that a little bit of a peekaboo area of the sky like that maybe okay let's eh, but that that barn can't be seen if that, that's that's pr putting too much pressure on that barn right there I think let's go over here I think. Let's open it up. What do you guys think? Well, I'm just going to do it <laughs> because there's a there's a delay in this uh, um, broadcast here. Okay. I can't wait for a response. Okay, let's go about right. Okay, so when this glue gets stuck, man, it is permanent. Okay, let's see. Let's go about right here. Sometimes you bring things in. Some 
sometimes you bring things out a little bit, like skewed a little bit like that when you're doing compositions and you don't have it exactly um, vertical. Okay, I think that looks good. They're, see, they're, they're slightly open like that. Okay. All right, so that is that. Let's cut off the, let's cut off this excess amounts back here now. Hello, Ingrid, good to see ya. Ingrid, did you use those tree trunks in your um, Harry Potter piece? I think you might have, huh? That's a, such a cool piece. I think I've mentioned that in these uh, live streams before. Everyone check out Ingrid's channel. And uh, uh, what did you call that um, piece that you did? That's always been one of my favorite uh, scenes uh, that people have done. And you can see it being created right in front of your eyes on Ingrid's channel. Let's see here. All right. So trimming this up. Ingrid, I'm doing something that I just never do, which is like, I don't know. It's almost like I'm piecing together a scene on this one, on this mirror card scene. And hopefully I can kind of get it to integrate a little bit. In that scene of yours, Ingrid, um, this is what I always think about. You put it in a good way, but you said, you know, sometimes your scenes in working with, it's what it is is when you're working with so much kind of free form kind of applications of media and you're building, um, kind of that media together, it's so true that a lot of the scenes kind of go through this ugly period, you know? <laughs> you know, just because it doesn't, you know, you haven't kind of brought it to resolution, you know, and, uh, and here's the, uh, the mirror aspect of it. And I went, I went a little bit too much with the mirrored aspect on my first one. So I thought it's going to look a little bit better, kind of a little bit more plain down below here. Okay, so I really need to um, introduce an element of um, variation within that barn. So I'm hoping I can do it with um, some pens, maybe with some lighter versions of something. I don't know. Let's see. Um, here's a lighter ver I, I could use my, we're talking about sharpening colored pencils. This one's a little bit dull, but let's see if I can kind of bring some of this in to the barn. I don't know if I can. Maybe I picked out the um, the lighter um, version or a, a more uh, porous version of that paper right here. I'm working on that iridescent, so yeah, it's invisible right there. Okay, let's see. Okay, here, this is working right here. I want to bring in some variation into that barn, you know, doing just stamping it on a flat piece of paper like that. A uniform, you know, uniform monotone paper. I just want to bring in some slight variation like this. Okay, and this is a this is a color that's also on, you know, some of my tree trunks here. So I, I wouldn't say that it's kind of creating somewhat of a, a connection between it, but at least there's a little bit of variation rather than having something just totally flat, although the sky is totally flat right now. But the sky isn't like a, a, a visual kind of focal point though either. So if you want to bring a little bit of richness into a piece, you know, you want to do it on your um, kind of visual anchor points, focal points. Okay, this, I do need my colored uh, pencil sharpener. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe when, when I ever do uh, colored pencils, I should I should have my sharpener on there just to show people. Okay, so 
here's black. So I'm adding in some highlights with the uh, with the lighter tone and adding in some darker with this. Okay, so shadows, shadows in the darker area of the piece and highlights with the light. Okay, so right underneath the eaves like that. It gives it a little bit more dimension. It's not such a boring kind of flat look to it. Okay. Yeah, uh, Ingrid, I like the um, the uh, the framing aspect of them. To me, you, you put those trees anywhere, and it just frames off any type of whatever you have in you know in that scene anywhere. It's like instant framing, you know, and they cover a decent amount of area, so it just kind of takes care of some some you know that that aspect of it, you know, and it frames things off really solidly. Yeah, I'd love to see how you've organized your stamps there, Karen. Yeah, I've never done this before, Ingrid. And I was kind of mentioning to people, maybe it's not a great idea to be doing something for the first time, like in a live stream. <laughs> that degree of kind of uh, um, experimentation. First of all, because I... When I do that type of thing, it's pre-recorded or um, live stream, I, there tends to be like an extra amount of like, uh, you know, it's like, oh my gosh, you know, someone plays a drinking game where every time I say, uh, you know, they're going to last like two minutes. I mean, in theory, I mean, this, you know, this kind of, method i mean it's it's pretty easy but i don't know i've just never done it before but i wanted to i wanted to see how it looked like especially in the background and uh on this foil type of thing i mean there's just no way that i can get that pure red you know against that foil there's just no technique where i can apply that red on top of the blue foil so um let's see let's have a little bit of tone like that um, when I spray seal this too, everything will get a little bit of the same kind of um, finish over it too. So that plus a couple little things I think should bring this together a little bit more. And like I said, I, I still have some little tricks that I'm going to try out here with the um, with the acrylic paint pens and you know some Dr. Martens here. All right. Um, Karen, I have discontinued some stamps. Most of them are in production, though. Um, and what you mentioned there, Ingrid, that's like completely what I'm trying to do in them. Um, you want to feel like you're in the scene. So what I'm going for is like a really immersive type of uh, experience. So that's why I was mentioning to people in the other streams or, uh, you know, in my other videos is I try to add in, we're working on a two dimensional surface basically, but, and these things are visual, but when you add in things like the, um, the real textural types of touches in pieces and, you know, for me, the white paint, uh, pigment ink types of touches, it kind of, enters into the mix this um, kinesthetic type of um, element of uh, space, I guess you can say. So when you add in those other things like that, it's visual texture, it's not physical texture, but when you add in all those little elements like that, I think it lends itself to kind of a more expansive kind of a... Um, sensory thing and the more senses we kind of engage with people kind of the more kind of immersion um, potentially we can get from that or we can kind of uh, convey maybe so um let's see so in regards to yeah that immersion and kind of the 
going into the scene for people um, as many different sensory types of things we can do. Okay, so I started adding in these. These are Prismacolors, by the way. Uh, who just said it? Yeah, Karen asked that. It's Prismacolors, so just your Prismacolors, you know, um, standard ones. I don't know what they are. I think they're Pris I think they call it something else. It's it's Prisma. Um, Pri oh, Prisma. I think it's called Prisma Premieres, but back when they didn't used to call it that. So this is like a, I don't know like a 35 year old set of mine. If there's a, oh, I just noticed there's a number, number 955, you know, I don't know. Okay, so let me see, let me try to add this in. This is where I'm kind of running into this problem now of not having things integrated on the same plane. I'm coloring this in, but there's a ledge here. <laughs> I'm not used to uh, working on off ledges, so. Okay, I was showing people before, kind of, you know, to go with a um, uh, shadows when you're doing these things. I mean, it doesn't have to be so straightforward or anything like that, but let's say if there's a shadow, let's say if there's a source of light that's way over here, then the shadows would be kind of at this, you know, extreme angle like this, okay? So the angle for this one at the base would be like that, and the shadow would be going that way, okay? So you move your kind of source of light wherever you want it to go. Now, I don't have a source of light in here, but you're just kind of choosing wherever you want it to go. If it's central, then your shadows are going to be roughly like this way right here, okay? And then you move that from that source of light, and then that shadow being cast by this one is going this way. Now, this is supposed to represent you know, the barn is supposed to re be representative of something that's farther back from this ridge right here. So I wouldn't necessarily have this barn casting a shadow down here unless it was on this bank of snow in front of it in which I would cast the shadow. Okay, but this is behind it there. So we're not doing that. All right. So let's see. Let's do the shadows in a little bit of bluish tone. Let's see. I'll just make my shadow... Let's say it'll be something like right here, okay? So you go like this, and if you want to check out the angle, the angle for this one is like right here. See that? Okay. So, and I'll blend this out too. I have to do a lot of blending again because uh, because of this ridge here. So, okay, so that's roughly like that, okay? And then this one, I think I moved my paper. <laughs> so this one's going to be like this, okay? Like that. Now, this isn't taken into account this, the slope of the, the snow or anything like that, okay? I, I'm not, I, don't, I, I may, I don't really consider that too much, although that would be part of the equation. All right. So again, this isn't a graceful kind of transition right here. But again, I'm going to be using some other things in here. So let me try to get in this little crack here too. So this is this is the part that I was kind of worried about. Well, I wasn't worried about it, but it was that was the type of thing that I was thinking about. Okay, if these things are going to be kind of in the snow, how am I how am I going to handle this little area down here? Okay. This ledge. I guess I could have stamped it. I guess I could have stamped it on this, like this trunk could have been stamped on a larger piece of paper where the shadow is kind of part of that so it's on the same slope maybe but let's just see if i can integrate it in there okay so there's there's some blues like that yeah ingrid that's mine is older than that but that's a that's a pretty old set there they last forever don't they especially with certain colors <clears throat> now if i was a kid you know, um, growing up and it was like my crayons, you know, you get that new box of crayons in every class every year. My purple one would have been totally, uh, used up. <laughs> I think it was like, uh, as kids, uh, growing up, um, every time we got that new box of crayons every, uh, new school year. And I look at the old set, I think it was like brown and uh i don't know maybe the black wasn't used too much 
gray, probably hardly at all. Okay, so adding in these colors like that, were there any other questions? <laughs> Oh, yeah, the paper. I didn't think they would, okay. Yeah. A lot of commercial paper companies, um, you know, they're used to selling, I don't know, you know, enough paper to supply, you know, the printing of, uh, you know, some run of some publication or something like that. Textbook, you know, they're running, you know what I mean? And they're not even selling in reams of a uh, eight and a half by eleven, okay, or, or you know whatever your standards saying. What a what is it a a six or whatever, you know they're used to doing dealing in bulk quantities, okay. Um, a lot of these even out in the U.S., you know, I mean, there's not a lot of companies out here that just also have their stuff just direct to the public. So you might have to find like someone that buys from them in smaller quantities that would also sell something to you like that. Okay, so I'm spending a lot of time, God, this video right here, it's like a lot of time just on my little like one like quarter inch area right here. Let's add a little bit of uh, lavender to that shadow area as well. Okay, like so. Let's bring some of this up into my tree. If anyone's out there that knows a really great source for papers in the different countries that you happen to be in, uh, please email me or comment in the section so that people can find uh, the materials that they're looking for. Yeah, I'm with you, uh, Ingrid. My Marvy brush markers are 30 years old, uh, most of them. Yeah, back to school. We always got that new crayon box. I remember uh, some people had it, but I didn't have it as a kid, but there was a crayon box that had the built-in sharpener, which I always thought, oh my God, that would be like so cool to have, you know? Uh, the barn is... Um, this red iridescent paper, it was the only red that I happened to have. I have no idea what this paper is right here. Foil right here, Recollections foil. And the tree trunks are just like on a matte cardstock, so they might have looked better in glossy, but I wanted to use, I wanted to have the free uh, ability to put the um, colored pencils on there. Okay, let's, let's see how this is looking right now, okay. In the reflection area like that, not too bad. All right, so let's go in, let's see, let's see if I can do something right here. Um, <laughs> that's interesting, you like the smell of crayons, I do too. I like the smell of all media. I think this is looking, that's not integrating very well. Okay, that's an alcohol pen, okay. I wanted to see if I can add in some other tones in there. That's looking too extreme. Now, when I spray seal that, it's going to integrate that, those harder marks like that, no problem. The whole thing will get darker when I spray seal. But, okay, this is totally um, smearing around my, this is VersaFine Claire here. Okay, that's gonna get much dark. I might have to, this one here, I might have to leave you guys and go spray seal this. It'll take me like two minutes, but it's just, it really needs that spray sealing to integrate these things a little bit more. Okay, here's the thing that I'm looking forward to right here. It's this, okay? Let's start bringing in some of this element into here on the trees and whatnot. I love the smell of crayons. I, you know, I used to do a lot of photography and in classes we develop our film. I love the smell of fixers and developers in the dark room. I like, I don't know if I like the smell of spray sealant or something like that, okay? But I don't mind it. Some people it really stinks, okay, if they're, if they're just not used to it. But all the, um, you know, the different ad markers, those harsh, like, xylene markers and stuff like that. 
I don't know, some people get like, you know, like a buzz from using those too much, but um, yeah, all those different uh, types of uh, media out there. I don't know, maybe it kind of takes me back too, so I kind of like it. Okay, so let me go in with this and we're going to bring in this kind of textural element to it, okay? And I feel that I need to bring in this textural element to kind of harmonize with the um, the different levels in here. And then we'll bring in some white pigment ink as well, okay? I'm going to be putting in this, I don't know what it re represents, um, some snow on the tree as well, like this. It's totally not integrated from a visual standpoint or textural standpoint at this point in time, but that's where my white pigment ink always comes into play and kind of really helps me out with all of this, okay? This is a three millimeter paint pen, so really big. Stuff that I would never have used before, but I started using it last year and love it. It's just because it's, it's so bold and kind of um, shockingly different in terms of a textural element. But I don't know, I've gotten, I got used to it reasonably quick, but then um, less fearful of it <laughs> because of the white pigment ink integration, okay? I'm getting real smudgy all over right down here, but I'll bring in my uh, white pigment ink over that too. Um, so this piece of paper down here is also just um, some matte cardstock. I, I mean, I, we could have done, we could have done glossy too. Okay, let's see. Yeah, I'm with you, Karen. Yeah, the versifying, you got to really watch it with certain types of media. But man, nothing gets quite as dark as that. Um, yeah, I should I should spray seal. Uh, Annie, you, you are a dark, you're a photographer too, huh? Or photography. I took photography in high school and, uh, and then I needed a uh, in elective in college one time, so I just took it there too. But um, yeah, I miss those days. I miss um, I miss working in the dark room. I would never do that these days with just how easy digital photography is. But there's something to be kind of putting your hands in fixers and developers and all that, and kind of watching that um, thing that you're um, doing kind of develop right in front of your eyes. I'm lo looking down here and seeing if I, there's anything that I want to do, but again, this is a mirror card, so um, certain things that I may not want to do. Okay, here. Here's what I'm looking at right here. That transition zone between right and here, there's just, there is no difference between um, the snow and the bank right here for that reflection. So let's do this right here. Let's adjust that a little bit with, um, I need a roll of paper. No, I do have another roll of paper towels it looks like in the ready. <laughs> All right, so let's do a little bit. We need to do a little bit of a, a transition right here, I think. And that'll make this look a little bit more round by integrating this shadow in with this area down here and then we'll i don't want it like super dark or anything like that i just want some kind of transition zone okay let's see i i don't have posca yeah so other people are going to have to kind of, unless these are kind of versions of posca i don't know i i take it poscas are, are they acrylic paint pens And I think Posca is just that brand, right? Um, oh, I'm getting real textural here. Okay, get a much smoother surface right here for this. And again, you know, you don't have to be super careful about this if you use white pigment ink because as I'm applying this ink down here, it's a little bit rough and things like that, but I just know that I can just go back over with the white pigment ink, okay? 
and it just kind of takes care of all that. It takes care of all my uh, my problems. Okay, let's see. let's go like that. So see that little ridge down there? It's just kind of subtle. Um, yeah, Annie, I'm with you. I I've always been. I work in color and everything like that, but uh, at kind of hard, I'm kind of more of a, a black and white illustrator and photographer, you know. When I was shooting film, the film that I kind of started using a lot of or dominating most of my uh, photography right before digital was um, this one type of film called Scala. And it was a black and white um, slide film. And I just love that one. So when you see a scene like this, for me, I mean, it's it's about color. It's integrating color and everything like that. But for me, the thing that I'm looking at is contrasts, you know, and that's something that contrasts and textures, which is, you know, kind of the thing that's with black and white. So this is what I always recommend to Andy Vern is um, when you're doing scenic stamping or something like that, yeah, you know, work with colors and things like that, but periodically just do some things just in grayscale, black and white. And it, it really kind of, um, hello, Jen. It really kind of um, sensitizes you to those things so that when you go back to color and everything like that, your sense of color becomes much more acute, I think. Okay, I can't see that right now. <laughs> I have my exposure on, so you can barely see this, but you see, let's see if you can see this right here. Can you see that? Um, look at that all that uh, purple and blue down here. Let's make it a little bit more blue. Let's integrate it with this um, color. So let's go in with the memento. Or maybe better yet, let's be a little bit safer and go with the Bahama blue here. Okay, let's see. let's bring this down in here like so. Kind of the water's edge type of thing. Um, my favorite photographer right now, contemporary photographer, is this guy named Clyde Butcher, and he shoots all black and white. I don't know if he's gone digital yet. He did have a stroke, so I'm not sure if he's carrying around that large black and white format camera with him into the swamps. Okay, there we go. You see all that right down there? It's that I did a horrible job with the uh, my blending there, but we'll just go back in with white now and just go right back over that. Um, yeah, that Posca, I, I believe it's just a brand name, um, for acrylic paint pens. I haven't tried them out, though. Uh, yeah, Marvies are dye-based inks. Marvy doesn't have, uh, Marvy does have, um, alcohol pens, but as far as their inks go, um, they are dye-based. Okay. All right, let's see here. So yeah, I'm making my little tweaks here. Okay, let me see. I'm going this way because I'm getting all kind of smudgy in here, okay? Okay. I think that's a little bit dry. Okay, bear with me here. I need to re-ink this pad a little bit, so. Uh-oh, this is precious right here. Um, as far as in the U.S., the um, Imagine Crafts is the distributor for all Sukaneko things, and their um, white reinkers are like in some cargo ship somewhere, getting shipped. So they've been out of it for a while. Now, see, this is my here. While I'm at it, I'll show you this right here too. See this right here? This is my cotton brilliance, you know. <laughs> Because I use the white so much, and this is my impression pad, okay? But my cotton one right here. So you get these little fuzzies all built up on there, but, you know, just when you re-ink periodically, just go like this, just scrape off that. It's not, this isn't, this isn't um, disintegrating by pad. This is just scraping off all of that excess cotton that sticks to it. You know, it's not hurting the pad at all, the sponge pad. But I just kind of... D, I don't know, whatever, 
you guys can come up with some term for this one, but just D linting or whatever, all that cotton up off of it. So I know it's that that's blurry. Let me see if you can see that right there. But see this little lint thing right here? That's a lot of buildup of cotton on there. That's like three weeks worth. And I use this pad all the time, so you don't I don't get a ton of it on there. All right, so let's go back to this. All right, so yeah, hopefully it's looking a little bit more 3D, you know, dimensional. And see this right down here. Like I said, this is all rough, all right? I mean, that is not a great application of ink by any means, but you just mellow it out. You just go on like that with this. So you don't have to be, I don't have to be careful about a lot of applications of media that I do. Okay, because I just know that I'm going to come back in with this. So, okay, so with those um, paint pen dots, I mean, it looks okay like that, but you know, I can go like this and it looks like it's um, more integrated and textural and there's less contrast between those white dots in the background. So again, it's kind of a, that integration that kind of happens in here that just kind of takes care of all those it, it it's a problem solver for me so i don't know maybe some that you see with a lot of this white in there maybe there was a lot of problems on there i don't know but i think it it enhances kind of what you already have in there so here's the lighting it's i'm working pushing lighting right here so the lighting looks a little bit more extreme i think and here's the part where i can't do this this is like on a ledge like that. So maybe if I want to put some more of this up this tree like this, I guess you just put a piece of paper like that, right? And I can put a little bit more like this and I'm illuminating that side of the tree, kind of facing my light source or whatnot. So, yeah. <laughs> I mean, sitting here in person, I mean, I can see those edges. Oh, I can see that edge right there a lot. But I don't know. Maybe I can get in there slightly more or something like this. Okay, yeah, a little bit more. I need my uh, sharpener. <laughs> Ingrid, how do you sharpen your pencils? People were talking about that. Do you have problems with breakage? I don't have problems with breakage, you know, sharpening my uh, Prismacolors. And you're using a set, you know, almost as old as mine. Well, not quite. Mine's about from the 80s, but I, I don't have a problem with these breaking off in here uh, when I'm sharpening. But that's, a, I don't know, that's a common, it's a common kind of issue going on. Okay, see that, you know, it's a little bit more integrated in here. I don't mind that little edge right down there. Small price to pay for kind of ease of application, I think. Okay, let's see here. Okay, so we have that. How's that? Let me see. We got so much of that reflection coming off of this, I can't hardly see that edge down there like that. But... Oh, Ingrid has the best sharpener. One by Derwent. Discuss the sharpener. Okay, guys, I'm going to go and spray seal this because I really want the trees to be much starker black on here so for you to see it. Um, so I'm going to do that. Okay. This will take me a couple, a little minute or so. Go grab a, a drink or something like that.
Sorry, I'm back. Okay, so this is what I spray sealed with. I just spray sealed with the UV resistant clear. Hopefully, I don't know. I think these trees are darker though, right? It looked like it got darker when I was out there. Sometimes it dries and it's not quite as dark, but I don't know. Um, I think, it, yeah, I think it darkened it up there. So again, it's a little bit more integrated too, I think. You know, I didn't spray too much in here, didn't need it, so I spray sealed like, I hit it out, out here and here, okay? Um, okay, so let's see. I'm trying to think if there's anything else in there that I want to do before I hit it with this, okay? I'm going to put a little bit of texturing over this whole thing with the um, uh, Dr. Martens, okay? So Dr. Martin's bleed proof white. All right. And from a just from a textural standpoint, it'll integrate everything a little bit more with a common texture. Okay. I, you know, how much I use on here, I don't know. All right, what did everyone talk about here? Did any, anything come up good? <laughs> Derwent sharpener. I don't know what is that Derwent sharpener? Is that a electric or is that a manual? Did you mention that up there? Huh. Oh, manual. Okay. Yeah, it, it, uh, Ingrid, do you get, you know, you don't get any breaking, right, of the, uh, of the, uh, the, I don't know, do you call it pencil lead? It's not lead, but, you know, the colors. I don't know, what, what about everyone else, you know? Everyone else have some good, uh, kind of, uh, solutions with the, uh, the, the pencil, the colored pencils. Like I said, I never get any breaking, so. Um, and I've used, I don't know, I was using those ones at the school too. The, you know, those, you had these ancient uh, kind of electrics, you know, to use in there. Um, I don't know, I never had a problem, but I I, I do know, that, I don't think we were using pencil, uh, Prismas at, at the school though, okay? I think we were using, I don't know, some other brand that was cheaper or something like that. Um, as far as I, are, are Prisma colors too, are they the softest of all the um, colored pencils out there? I think someone said that before. I was looking on some colored pencil forums because when I started using colored pencils more, um, I started getting a lot of questions about them. I was like, I'm like the last person that anyone should ask about colored pencil anything because I have this set that's like 35 years old that you know I hardly ever used. You know, most of these things were like still, I mean, a lot of these pencils in this thing are still like really tall, you know, I mean, I barely used them. So I started using like colored pencils like last year. So, um, all right, I need to clear out some space here. So let me get all this stuff out of the way. Okay. So let's hit this. Um, with some of this bleed proof white. Someone is mentioning that my bleed proof white looks really thin and it is really thin. It's thinner than I'd want, but I was combining three different jars, you know, cause I used to go out and use these in, I think it was make and takes, I, I think. So I just had all these different jars of it around. I thought, eh, let's combine them. And then one of them was just a solid brick of like super hard um, watercolor, so paint. So I really added to, wait, way too much water to it. Okay, so let's see. Okay, well, as I'm doing this, I'm just kind of releasing like a couple, I don't know, I'm guessing maybe like three or four fibers most of the time with my thumb there. Yeah, let me get a little bit more.
All right, I think that is it. I love splatter painting. It takes me back to uh, that time once in kindergarten. <laughs> I think that's when we do a lot of that type of, um, you know, technique though. This friend of mine was making a, like a diorama for his uh, kid brother when we were in high school. He had a really young little brother and was making a diorama for, I think, the, his Micronauts characters or something like that. And he did a splatter painting technique. I was thinking, I haven't seen anyone do that since, you know, like years. And that was at that time. Okay, so there is that. So see this? I mean, it just kind of integrates things a little bit more. I mean, we have... And this is like um, iridescent red paper. Then we have white pigment ink stamped on foil. Okay, so this is like one thing, completely different than everything else. Then we have white pigment ink stamped on foil. That's completely, there's. it's not happening anywhere else. I have these two trees stamped in the VersaFine Claire on white paper. Nowhere else in the scene. And then we have this piece of white paper, so it's... You know, it's easy to it's it's easy to just have these completely unrelated you know objects in here. But here's one thing. You know, the the white pigment ink can go in here and kind of integrate things a little bit more um, with a little bit of fogging in here. Maybe I should put a little. I should try that on there. Um, I'm trying to combine things from a textural standpoint. So the splatter painting of the whole thing is kind of something that's gives them something. A little bit related with each other okay so let's see here too let's see if I can put a little bit of this over that I'm not sure if I could do that because there's this ledge right here because remember this is a piece of paper against that barn so let's see if that works um, okay let's see okay so I'm going to work it from here and up but yeah this is really the thing that can really um, okay, that's fine. I didn't know how it would apply over that little ledge there. I didn't want to get this space in between that application of it. Okay. Maybe this isn't the best thing for that. Here, let's go with this right here. The other high-tech um, toning tool. I was joking about with people before, Ingrid. I was saying I should... We, you know, if I packaged a, 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 like 10 cotton balls into a little package and call them um, uh, blending, ink blending clouds, you know, we'll see how well those would, uh, would those would move. <laughs> so what would you call these? Detailed, de extra fine um, blending clouds right here. And I'm joking, folks. I'm just, I was just making a joke about how there's a lot of these repurposed tools in the industry that it's just a common tool but then or object but then someone just i don't know they make it yellow or you know that things different slightly and they call it something else and then i don't know huge markups and whatnot all right so adding a little of that down there maybe this one was the best thing this one's a little bit too dense here okay let me try to go like this so that was like large, a large area. And this is a small area like that, like that. Okay. So just watch that it's not frayed. And that's the key to using this right here. That's kind of solving that little area in there be between that barn, you know, that kind of that open area right in here, you know, that I didn't cut out that was all red in there. So you can just kind of obscure it a little bit like that. Okay. And let's put a little bit more over here too. Okay, so going like that, see, it kind of obscures that 
a little bit right there and it kind of integrates it somewhat. I'm getting a little bit of a line like that. That's what I was kind of curious about. But I don't know, just having that little element in there. Okay, now let's go back in with this too and let's come back over here. And I've spray sealed this, so um, when you do that, you can lose a lot of your um, white in here at times um, that you've lightly applied. It kind of disappears as if it were um, something like pastels or something like that, light pastels. If you spray seal it, you know how it gets darker. That happens when you, with this a lot of times. So you can just go back in and reintroduce some of that. Now see, if I spray seal this again, that'll um, decrease. And remember, when this dries, it becomes much more transparent. So that's not going to be as light. So sometimes when you're applying this type of thing, you apply more than you think you're going to need, okay? Because it's going to dry darker, okay? All right. So let's see here. Okay, now, I think this is looking pretty decent at this point in time. I'm going to make a focal point up here in the form of like a North Star. That's what I want to know, uh, Candy. I was going to get, I used to use an oil-based white paint pen from, I think it was Uchida. And I think it was more opaque than the acrylic ones. I'm almost certain of it. And I was thinking about getting a, a set of those, but I have a feeling they won't last as long. I think they clog up over time a little bit faster, but I'm not sure. Um, but they were really great. Sometimes I want like a darker, I mean, a, a more, a lighter, more opaque application of something. And it was kind of shiny too, when you put it down there. All right. Um, but yeah, it was the, it was the Marvy, um, it was the Uchida white, I don't know what it was called. I don't think it was called white paint pen. I think it, I think the Sakura one was a, was a, like this one because it was very translucent and water-based and the Marvy one was the, uh, or the Uchida one was the, uh, was the oil-based one. It, it had a really different characteristic to them. In terms of the finish, it was very shiny and raised with the oil aspect of it. Okay, so let's see if I can do my little North Star type of thing in here. Okay, so what you do on this one, you can practice on a separate piece of paper too, okay? So, and in here, see all these little white splatter paintings, you know, I would go in and add in kind of a little bit of variation to it, you know, have some larger ones just hand drawn in like that, kind of cluster them sometimes, or you can put in your little constellation in there. I always mention that if you're giving a card to someone, you can do little things. I, I've put like people's initials in there before, kind of hidden in the stars, <clears throat> or you can do their kind of astrological, <clears throat> astrological sign, you know, whatever, you know, uh, Scorpio or whatever in the sky. It's something that they would probably never, no one would ever notice, but it's those little things that are kind of fun to do from a, um, I don't know, just, you know, from a creator standpoint. It's those little things that kind of you do um, in your pieces, you know, to keep your, your own interests going, you know, those subtleties like that. All right. I think that line was like way too long, but let's see if I can do that. Okay, so I go from the center and then I just do this little check out like that, okay? So every direction you go, you kind of just do this little check mark, okay? You don't want, and you want it to go like this, okay? You're not going like this and up, okay? Otherwise, it's just too straight of line. But you can kind of, you can, again, you can kind of, um, you can definitely tweak things too. Like say you get too thick of a line, then you just take, you know, a little exacto blade and just shave off, you know, the part you won't want. So that wasn't that was hardly a, a vertical little line, but oh well. Okay. So I got go like this. Here's one of those things that I do too. Um landscape format. I go with a longer um horizontal arms like that. Uh, you know, if it's, if it's portrait, I go with, you know, the longer elongated verticals, vertical, um, sides. And then 
For these little secondary parts, I just go with that little check like that. I do them secondary. If you're doing, if you're doing an eight point, and see, I'm kind of covering this up so I don't kind of rub off all those little stars underneath like that. That, and we have our little star like that. It's a little bit too much right there, so I'll kind of mellow it out with a little bit of a haze in there. But it kind of gives us our focal point, you know. In the piece, let's see here. Okay, so I just want a really light application of this. All right. I might need a new Q-tip. <laughs> this has a bunch of dried um, dried uh, ink on it, so it's a little bit kind of hard. Let's see what I'm doing here. Okay, so see that right there? That's what you want. You just want a really light application of something. All right, and I'm going in here and we'll add a nice little light glow to that star. And you just kind of lightly dab on there. And, you know, you can just add more according. Remember, it's going to get a little bit darker and less opaque. Not that it's super opaque right there, but there's that little glow there, okay? So let's make some of these other kind of stars in here with that same kind of texture. So these ones are smaller, of course, so I might just do a couple little taps. Like that. If you put too much, just kind of dab it off a little bit. But see that little glowing star in there? So from a textural standpoint, again, you're kind of bringing in that um, textural element to it. And then if you have that texture in other areas down here like that, it's a little bit of textural continuity through the piece with objects that represent, you know, the representative of something that are as far away as you can possibly get, right? You have that little glowing little touch in there. And then you have these areas down here that are the closest to you that have that same texture on it. So I'm talking about a lot of continuity in the most uh, kind of a, the most distant of, you know, objects within the space. So see that right there? And it looks really good on the top of the foils too. When you put that little kind of glowing little thin layer of pigment ink on there, you get those other different values of blue within that uh, space. Okay, so let's see. Oh, I don't, yeah, the Derwent, Derwent ink tents. I need to try out some of those um, other types of uh, medias, uh, mediums out there. Okay, let's see, let me, I think I need to change my exposure on this a little bit, my thing. Let me see if I can change my camera exposure a little bit. Okay, there we go. That's a little bit more true to the uh, card. Let's see how this is looking in a reflected area. All right, so we have that. And I'm not gonna do too much down here, okay? I, did, I went a little bit, I think I went too much on, it, on, on my previous scene. But I did like the white down here, okay? And especially, I think that would, that'll go really well with this um, piece to have some white elements down there instead of the, um, the framed off darker ones like before. So let's give that a shot. Um, let's go ahead and should we merge these right now? Let's go ahead and merge them. All right. Maybe I should spray seal this first. I don't know. So this is the, this is that cheap, um, foil right here, you know, of the, uh, the recollections. It's like on, I don't know, it's like on butcher paper or something like that. But, um, I don't mind. It's a, uh, it's like totally cheap, um, foil, especially these days, you know, you can buy a pack of, uh, 25 full size sheets of, uh, 
an assortment of foil colors. I think that's a really good deal, even at full price, but they're often on that buy one, get one free. So, all right, so let's see here. Let's go down like this. Remember to leave a little bit of space so that it can open and close freely. It looks like I made one. This piece is larger. <laughs> These are all like four and a half by five, you know, four and a quarter by five and a half uh, quarter page pieces, but I, I think everything's like all the different sizes here. So um, it's not like that. I don't know, maybe I should have merged it a little bit closer, but I'm not gonna get that unfixed right now. So remember, if, if you guys watched that one scene where I, uh, I left too much space in between, there was that big white gap. Now it's like a big black gap like that, but who cares? All right, so down here, let's go with the, um, the brilliance white. I'm going to use that same quote too, I think I did in the last one too, I think. Um, let's put it just right down here. Okay. So if I do a reverse out text, I can't put white up here because it's going to be a white text on a white reflected area. So it's going to have to be in this darker area down here. Like so. That would make a good Christmas card. It wouldn't take you that long like I'm doing on this one. You know, if you just kind of follow it along, because I, I had to figure out a lot of things on this one on the fly. And especially me not knowing how to do it too. All right, so let's go. Okay, so I'm going to do the text first because I, you know, if you have text down here, you want to work the other elements around it. You don't want to put a bunch of like pebbles and rocks down here and stamp your text on top of it. And then, you, you know, there's a rock going through the R here or something like that. So this will be the big focal point for the, the lower area, okay? And I love that floating text kind of illusion of this down here. Uh, let me test it out one more time. Let me see where... Okay, so anywhere from here down. Okay, that's... I have a lot more... Um, leeway than I thought I might have. Okay, so let's go here. I tend to not, I mean, I, I don't think it'd be bad, but I tend to not put text on that upper area. I mean, that this, if you're just doing this card, I mean, that text right here would be awesome. But since this is a mirror card, I tend to not put the um, text on that top portion because it would read, um, wrong in the reflected area. So there we go right there. And there's what that looks like right there. See that? I, I think this is like the one of the best parts of the mirror card is that is text, the ability of text down there and how that looks. I mean, that to me, that is just so much fun like that. Yeah. Okay, so that is that. Let's go with a couple elements down below. Um, hmm. Uh, mine are crooked quite often, Kay. <laughs> <laughs> but, okay, that being said, if you get too crooked of a um, something like that, that will wipe off with no problem right now, okay? Even if you heat set it, okay? The Brilliance Ink will wipe off clean with no any problem. And then just restamp it, okay? So that being said, what you want to do when you're done with these is you want to spray seal that and you'll be good. Okay, so I'm just going to add in some of this other texture in here. This is what I did on the last scene. I kind of forgot that I could do this, but um, having some of this texture like that in the shadow area, some of this white in darker area like that. And then I'll just add some of this around my um, text. Or if you have other imagery in here, you can do that. Like I often do um, 
black imagery in here um, to frame off my uh, foreground areas. But I thought last time, I thought, eh, I think this would have looked better with just, um, I don't know, white or, you know, kind of going minimal down here. Okay, so I'm doing this, I'm ghosting it out to get these different um, values of this object like that. I might have went overboard, but then remember, I can just wipe it off, which I might have to do if it's just too crazy. Or you can do this, and maybe I should do this in black and white. Uh, let's see, that's way too much. It's a little bit too busy. So let's see here. Yeah, it's too busy down here. It's way too busy. So let's just do that thing where I was talking about. Let's edit. I always tell people, especially on something like this, or a lot of things, I'd rather people kind of go a little bit overboard or a lot overboard than to just kind of hold back, especially with colors and whatnot. If you're not certain you want to use something, then try it out. Um, you can always kind of um, blend things in or obscure it and, uh, you know, just readjust afterwards. And then you'll know more for the next time you do it. But that's always better than kind of holding out and to have pieces not reach their kind of full potential resolution. Um, yeah, you can emboss this too. I don't like embossing uh, too much on the foils I've found because I have to kind of hold the heat on the foil for a longer period of time. And uh, I get more of that curling happening. And with certain colors of the foil, it could, um, it gives it that rainbow, which I've used um, strategically before, but just know that like with certain colors, if you keep that heat on there for too long, that metal will start to, you know, you'll get that little rainbow pattern. Okay, let's see this now. That's eh, still a little bit too much. That's too busy down at the base right there. I'm, but I am thinking about, I'm thinking about adding in some black down here. I want, let me see, I have a, larger tiny rock stamp that I've used. I'm not sure where I put it. It's probably sitting right in front of my face though. Ow, I don't know. I don't want to go looking for it right now. Unless it's just right here. Oh, I'm not gonna go look for it. Okay, let me see here. Let me go with this. I'm going to rub off some of this right down here. I went crazy on this one. Okay, let me see. Let me take that out like that. Okay, let's see. Let's take a look at this again. It looks too much like a little, like uh, some cats walked through like some uh, baby powder <laughs> and walked all over my piece. I want some of it down there, but not too much. Okay, I think that'll do it like that. Uh, let me see here. Let me do that. Let me put in a couple black impressions too. Um, I did that too. I embossed from underneath. I heated from underneath, but you just have to put in too much uh, um, of that heat on there. Now, like I said, I mean, I would do that on certain things, but on certain things like this, see, I already have this affixed to this paper too. So if I get any kind of curling at all, it's going to curl everything. It's going to curl my paper on the back here too. And I just don't, I don't know. I, it, it, I went, this is already affixed to here. The foil's already affixed to this piece of black cardstock. So I just, uh, I don't know. I wouldn't want that to happen. It just, and it took a little bit of time to emboss on there. It wouldn't be a bad idea though. I mean, can you imagine embossing this like in 
it might be interesting to do those embossing powders though those you know that are like those um what do you call those the, the rainbow ones you know um types of uh, powders those ones are really cool actually this black right here is just what the doctor ordered right here see this kind of integration of that black uh down there as well it's looking a little bit more balanced like that okay so let's yeah see that like that you can kind of see it like that, but then going over these ones like that. Okay, let's see. Oh! Hmm. Let me see something here, too. Okay, so that is that. I'm going to try something here. Um, where is my reeds? I'm going to, well, let's see. I'm assessing. Let's see. Okay. I'm going to do a white branch coming in from the sides. Like that, I think. All right, let's see if I can get a nice clean impression of this. I pulled these stamps out for the last scene, but um, I, I don't know, I think it, it might have even looked better to use this or something like this in white <clears throat> before. Okay, let's see. It looks like it'll flank that quote really nicely too. All right, be careful when stamping kind of your thick, I didn't mention it if you haven't seen me do this before, but stamping pigment inks on foil, it can kind of slide a little bit. So be careful about that sliding aspect when you touch down on there, going over that thick ink like that. Hold to allow the ink to transfer a little bit. We'll go like that. And let's see that branch in there like so. It's kind of an icy little branch and we'll balance it off on the other side a little bit. It's not kind of arcing down, but you know, so be it. I'll just put another little piece of it. Like, well, let me say, let me go like this. I'll have a little, just a little touch of it coming in from this side. Oops. <laughs> See, I think I skewed it again a little bit, but not too bad. Okay. All right. So that is that. Let's see what that looks like here. I don't know. I'm hoping it gives it a little bit more depth. So that's what that looks like down there. It's kind of interesting just as it's own, in its uh, in, just on its own, but then when you couple it with the reflective kind of part of it up top like that. Oh, now here's another thing that I didn't do on here. I mean, you could, you can splatter paint this bottom portion too, you know, and put some of that texture down in here as well. And I, I've done that before and that looked pretty good, but I don't, I don't think I'll do that on this one. I think we've hit it enough with that texture of that, uh, with those impressions down there. So that's what that looks like, like that. So there's your mirror card in terms of a construction. Let's compare and contrast here. Okay, here's the one kind of a little bit more integrated like that. I don't know. I like that foil. What do you guys think? I think that foil looks pretty good. <laughs> I might go for the, the foil version more like that. Let's see. But that's that right there. You see those little touches down here, you know? Having those little things kind of on that water surface, 
you get that parallax though going like this you know from that things move a little bit differently see that angle in there and that's what i think is really fun look at that look at that light going across that foil like that it's almost like a northern lights type of thing you know going across the horizon like that so i don't know like i said before on these pieces i think when you give a, someone a card like this it becomes a little bit more interactive uh in terms of the final product and again i think this looks like it's floating on you know kind of an icy surface like that in in this case you know normally it, it re, you know represents like a pond or something of that sort and remember things on these mirror cards too the things that are closer to the horizon show up more like this up here i mean i can see that little bit right there but the things up top there really don't reflect down here as much so you know unless someone's like this i don't think but yeah all right so that is that um foil in this piece but look at that foil look at that reflective thing. can you imagine if you do this like in a green or something like that i'm not talking about this it doesn't have to be this scene but um i think that'd be kind of cool or you know what i mean if you even don't even have this in here you have a couple trees on the outside this white right here and if you did this in a holographic foil um card the, i think this could really look northern light ish and then if you reflect that light in there like that and having it reflect down here i think that would look pretty cool i might have to do that one so there's the the recollections rainbow holographic um paper and that would be super easy to do I, you know you just kind of darken in some areas like that to give it kind of that curtainy type of feel or you just you can also just leave it wide open and i think that would be kind of interesting so i don't know so interesting things you know potentially with foils like that and i mean i think it'd look cool just as is but when you add that little ex extra element of that reflective nature of that you know it's kind of interesting so send out a card to someone see here's the thing about this too see all this right here i'm going to have to trim all of this excess off of here you know just to make it flush but you know that is kind of a fun opening like look at that kind of that light already kind of reflecting out from underneath there i think that sets out the anticipation level look at that right there look at even that how that looks isn't that cool like even when someone's opening up a card like this and seeing that like right there that almost looks cool and then you get that like that so yeah i don't know fun with foils so i think this card i don't know i think it was pretty fun i it, i think it warrants a kind of additional um testing and whatnot you know with this right in here having those on you know just cut out separately like that um I don't know, I think this type of thing opens up some new uh, potential <laughs> yeah. compositions and structures and whatnot. Yeah, something like that. So when you do your foil cards, you got to teach your um, recipients, you know, when they open it up, it's not to be looked at like this, you know, otherwise they're thinking, what the heck is this, you know? Things is too, you know, that you can do with these white paint pens too. It'd be kind of cool, you know, you can write, dear you know whoever you know happy you know birthday or something or you know merry christmas like that love whoever and then you'd have this you'd have your own handwriting kind of floating on the surface of like you know a sheet of ice or something like that wouldn't that be cool to you know handwrite this and that's what's fun about these paint pens you know it's like writing on you know black pieces now that you know and this isn't it's not as easy to write on this you know me have it kind of petering out once in a while but just kind of get it flowing and uh going on there again something like that might be uh might work out pretty well okay so anyways yeah um uh does let me see what is that does fools work on the foil cardstock foils work on wait what is that foils do foils work on the foil cards what does that mean Kay? um 
Oh, you mean foiling? Like foiling? Oh, you, I don't know. Does anyone know the answer to that one? It, I don't know if it would. I would think it might, but uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, foiling on foil. I don't know. Test it out. Test it on a little test piece or something like that. I would imagine you'd be able to do something like that. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm a rookie at foils in terms of usage. I've just been stamping on them. And again, with the brilliance inks, you know, for the most part. So um, yeah, Sweet Poppy, check them out. Um, yeah, this is very different. It, this was a really different construction for me, Karen. Okay, so my, 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 you know, the things that were, I was concerned with were how this would transition into here. Would it, you know, kind of be, um, somewhat of a reasonably graceful transition, especially with these, these are cut out on here and pasted down. I don't really do that, but again, that really opens up some possibilities with, you know, the difference between these trees and that foil background when you're working with such different surfaces together, you know, cutting them out like that really opens up the possibilities. I wouldn't want to cut out like certain types of images, you know, I'm not going to, you know, stamp this out and then cut it out. I don't know, there's those scan and cut types of things, you know, so maybe we can do something like that, but, you know, I'm not going to do something like that. I'm not going to cut that out. I'm not going to cut out, you know, something like this. <laughs> there is no way I'm going to cut around all those little, you know, edges like that. But, you know, for the tree trunks, straight cuts like that, that barn was, you know, was easy to do, you know, those types of images like that. Certain types of rocks, you know, are really smooth and easy to cut out. So, yeah. Sheila, thanks for uh, checking out the uh, the live. I'm, I'm glad you uh, you know uh, checked it out and you enjoyed it and whatnot. Um, like this one right here. This one was th this is one that, in terms of my process, went. This is like the most for me. I don't think this process was hard or anything like this. I just didn't know how it would turn out and integrate, and I was wasn't, wasn't exactly sure of my. Um, process in terms of the steps to do that you know like that's in back of that this is over this you know should i add in the you know should i color these up first and then you know paste them down i didn't know i think there were many different ways to do it but um yeah um i don't know i think it turned out okay though i really like the end result especially with that foil being so reflective it's nice having this. Here's the thing about the foils, okay? You can do this in a dark cardstock too, and that would be really great too. But look at this right here. That blue is different than that reflected blue down there because of the light that's shining on these two different things. So it just changes so much like that, you know, in that mirrored kind of reflective area. So I don't know. There's a lot of just I don't know, there's a lot of nuance in, uh, with something like this, too, and it just depends on kind of the angle that someone's viewing it at, too. I think it's, um, I don't know, it, it's a little bit more of a dynamic kind of a construction and just simply from, you know, doing a scene like this that on its own, I think, looks pretty, you know, it would be fine for a cutter, but you throw that, this is not a complicated area down here, you know, that is really simple. And like I said, if you don't have the brilliance things, then just emboss it or something. Or you go stays on down here, you know. Um, I haven't tried it yet. I keep saying I, I should really test it out here, but there's that stays on white like this. So maybe just do stays on down here, okay, in white and black. I didn't do any kind of blending down here at all. So this is just straight stamping down here. It's, all it is is just merging the two together, you know, to get that, you know, kind of look like that. So um, it's easy to do. And this is such an easy card construction like that. What you put on the outside, I don't know, you know, it's up to you, you know, it's on something like this. I think it'd be cool to just do a little bit of splatter painting of that, you know, that white on there. You can make a little star on there. You can do like this, you know, branch across there like that. Or, you know, this one's on black. So, I mean, you can do whatever you want on that outside like that. But anyway, okay, so that is that. What time is it right here? It's all kinds of different hours for us all over the globe. For me, it's 8.30 p.m. 
I just need to think about dinner. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the red barn, red foil, but blue, red and blue. I don't know. Think about a good title for this piece, you know, and let me know. Oh, uh, Canada, Sheila, um, in our uh, retailer section for um, the uh, Stamps Games line, you can see some different sellers in Canada. There's a lot less sellers, you know, around the world than there were before, but you can check on there. Or, you know, people can order direct if they don't, you know, the sellers there don't um, have things that you want or they can't special order it. Um, Australia, there's a seller uh, in Australia too. Um, if I'm shipping international, priority international is really expensive, but you can always have things, you know, you request first class if you order it from us direct too. In the UK, yeah, Sweet Poppy, um, started carrying it recently. Uh, Stampscapes UK is out there, um, yeah. That got laid out there for you, uh, Karen, 434. And that's 8 a.m., right? Yeah, a.m. So, yeah. So the thing is, is that, yeah, can you find, you know, Karen, can you find this uh, type of foil out there? I mean, this foil, you know, this silver foil is not, you know, kind of something that's out of the ordinary in terms of being able to access. Sometimes, like, party stores have that type of foil, you know, on hand, too. Um, you can find different, you know, um, incarnations of a reflective foil surface like that, you know, and you can use that, you know, just as long as you have something to stamp on that with. And remember, I stamped on this in Brilliance Ink. I can heat set this really fast and then you spray seal. Don't spray seal the super reflective area down here, like in this open area. Can I just spray seal your images around on this side just to affix them? And now if they're done in the, the stays on, I don't think you need to spray seal at all. So um, it just gives you a really big uh, head start. I need to test it out, but if I'm blending, normally I blend down here a lot more on my foil cards. I add kind of a vignette and shading and I tone in like that. But on this one, I thought it didn't need that. It might have, uh, you know, I wanted in the, a lot of that reflection down here so I didn't obscure it too much, but I do like these little elements like that in here. Yeah. Yeah, so Sheila, just, uh, you know, what you do is you just uh, send me an email and just give me the codes. And uh, and uh, first class is really quite reasonable. Um, it takes longer, uh, but, you know, there doesn't seem to be a problem with the uh, mail. You know, if you asked me like that, like one year ago, when mail was like taking forever, like even domestically, it would have taken forever first class to you. And in some countries, um, they weren't even accepting mail from U.S., like uh, Australia, New Zealand, uh, for a long time um, via USPS, but they were taking it like UPS and stuff like that. But I, I, if I'm not mistaken, I think we could ship anywhere right now. Um, I'm not absolutely certain, but I think so. As I sit here talking like that, I'm going to do something a little bit right here. As I look at this, <laughs> I'm going to add a little bit more of a darker tone right here. A little bit more of the versifying Claire here. So I think I went out of focus because it's focusing on my hand here. But as we're talking about this, uh, let's see here. All right, let's see how this looks here. It's a little bit, of, yeah, how's that look right there? That looks better, huh? See this right here? I darken in that perimeter like that a little bit more. So it, you know, it kind of changed the light slightly. Let's see, let's put a little more shadow at the base right here.
Yeah. All right. That might have been my last tweak. There we go. See, it's a little bit, you know, more dramatic right here. See it going a little bit darker right there in terms of that reflection. I mean, it looks good up here too, but I think down here too, that branch stands out a little bit more. You take something a little bit one step darker and the, everything else in there that's lighter than that, it looks one step lighter by contrast. There we go. Oops, let me see my in, in view right there. So there you have it. Uh, let's see. Order your cards from the paper cut. Yeah, the paper cut. I think someone turned me on to that fairly recently. And he likes the blue at the base of the card. Yeah, isn't that fun down there? That blue. And again, it's, you know, the different lighting on it kind of changes a little bit depending on the light. You know, it's reflecting on that top part like that. Um... What do you, what you do is buy enough items or cost to warrant, oh yeah, definitely so. Especially if you're going with a flat, like a flat rate thing. I was thinking it'd be cool if some people in some countries, you know, those things that you just cannot find anywhere. I wish, you know, we can get some kind of like group together, you know, and like if someone can't get, find like glossy cardstock or something like that, if they split the cost of like a, like a flat rate medium, um, priority mail box or something like that. You can fit like two reams of um, glossy cardstock. That's 400 sheets of full size paper um, in that. Priority mail isn't cheap though, you know, but if you split it between like four people or something like that, five, that is a lot of sheets of cardstock, you know, wherever you are in the world. Uh, someone Did someone mention Australia here? You know, there were some really good card stocks down there, but I don't know, some places are getting a little bit harder to kind of uh, source um, certain types of papers in some areas. So, yeah. Okay, folks, I am going to close out this scene right here. This uh, live stream. Thanks, everyone. For, for checking out the live. Uh, if I missed any questions that were directed at me, I hope someone else answered or whatnot. Uh, sorry if I missed you, but thanks so much for joining me in on what this one was a real kind of exper uh, experiment for me in terms of the... Uh, you know, the trimming and the kind of the piecing together of a scene instead of it just being on a kind of a flat plane. But I don't know, that looks pretty good back there. And again, I it was all those little touches on that barn. It was looking flat before, but I think that looks pretty good. Uh, and like I said, I'll have to kind of experiment with certain types of uh, compositions a little bit more. Like I said, I'm not going to cut out everything. Some of the images are just too... Um, complex on the exterior area and let's and so I can do something like one of those one of those scan and cut uh, machines which my wife has you know but I've yet to kind of experiment with but she's always kind of encouraging me to so um, I don't know there's all kinds of other things to do you see those little things in here so play around with your foils and play around with your applications of ink on it not the black but the white but look at that look at those variations up in the sky I mean, that really looks like it's glowing to me, you know, up there. I mean, it does on glossy cardstock and, you know, skies that we do it. But in the foils, they're really fun to do that with. And it just, I don't know, you know, it's just a couple little taps like that. And you can really get a lot of vari textural variation up there. And it looks like, you know, little lights up there, I think. Okay, so anyway, uh, thanks, Jen, Annie, Karen, Christine, Kay. Cherries, honey. We'll see you again on a future live stream. And uh, yeah, fun with foils. I don't know what I'll do. I'll move away from the red barn. You guys are sick of that one. But I think we've figured out um, some new kind of application potential 
<laughs> in terms of some of the uh, scenes coupled with uh, whatever, cardstock foil combinations that I've never done before. So it's always fun to see those new things. All right. Thanks, everyone. Oh, I'm going to let Karen finish off here uh, for those people. And it's good, too, Karen, because people can watch the... Um, um, the, uh, the replay, or if there's any th kind of important things that you guys think of adding that other people can, um, benefit from, put it in the description, uh, the comment section down below on these videos too, so that people can always kind of, uh, you know, reference it, you know, if they're like, Hey, what did that, you know, what did Karen say about whatever, you know, they can take a look at the, uh, the video or whatever, uh, in the description section. All right, logging off. Thanks again. Good night. Good morning. Uh, good afternoon to everyone. Hope you have a great rest of, uh, you know, night or day.